Hey, what's up guys? Long-term Bitcoin holders are still buying Bitcoin. In this video, I will explain how a long-term Bitcoin holder sentiment can drive Bitcoin up to $300,000 per coin in this cycle. Then Michael Saylor will explain why Bitcoin's $100 trillion market cap in the long term is very realistic. Let's start with the coin market cap. As of the time of this recording, Bitcoin is trading slightly above $59,000 per coin. This is the current price of 1 kilogram gold bar. The choice is yours, 1 Bitcoin or 1 kilo of gold bar. I think it's very obvious what would I choose. Bitcoin's market cap is at around 1.1 trillion bucks. Ethereum is currently trading at around $1,850 per coin. It's up by 2% for the past 24 hours with a market cap of around $212 billion. Binance just recently flipped Cardano. Binance is up by 1.6% while Cardano is down by 2% for the past 24 hours. Binance surpassed Cardano by more than $1 billion. Ripple XRP seems like it finally break 50 cents. It seems like it's been trading for around 40 cents forever. If we take a look at the market dominance, this is what the cryptocurrency market would look like. BTC currently takes 62% of the total cryptocurrency market. Ethereum takes second place as the largest cryptocurrency and it takes 12% of the entire pie. Then we have Binance and Cardano take a single digit percentage of around 2% each. Then everything else becomes infinitely smaller as we dig deeper into the list. The Canadian Purpose Bitcoin ETF just surpassed $850 million of asset under management as they accumulate more and more Bitcoin. Since they opened, they already accumulated more than 14,000 BTC. And this is just the beginning. The hunt after Bitcoin is real as it gets. Here in the United States, Scaramucci Skybridge Capital files for Bitcoin ETF. We also know that Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is trying to convert its closed-end fund into an exchange-traded fund. It seems like a legit ETF in the United States is just a matter of time. I believe it is highly likely it will happen this year. As we can see from this chart, more and more Bitcoin disappears from cryptocurrency exchanges. The biggest Bitcoin exchange is by far in the United States is Coinbase. And since the third quarter of 2020, we can see a drastic decrease in Bitcoin available reserve. It is very interesting how since 2013, all cryptocurrency exchanges were expanding its Bitcoin reserve and now as corporations and financial institutions enter into the Bitcoin market, the opposite effect takes place. It simply means that cryptocurrency exchanges take Bitcoin from available supply and place them into the cold storage. Bitcoin shortage is real. And there is no such a thing as too much Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the most scarce asset in the world. Period. This chart represents long-term holder market value to realized value on short-term and VRV. This matrix takes into the account only old and sent transactions output and serves as an indicator to assess the behavior of a long-term Bitcoin holders. In other words, this metric can work as a fair value as assessed by the behavior of the long-term investors. This metric shows that we are not in the top of the bull market, not yet, as long-term Bitcoin holders continue accumulating Bitcoin. In fact, we are way far from the top. Currently, this metric is at around 10. When it's about 20, it could be a good indicator that the Bitcoin market could be at the top. In 2014, when this matrix was at around 10, Bitcoin was trading at around $200 a coin. Then this matrix spiked about 20, and Bitcoin price increased about $1,000. So Bitcoin still managed to generate another 5x. In 2017, bull market, exactly same thing happened. When this metric was at around 10, Bitcoin was trading at around $4,000 per coin. When this metric spiked about 20, Bitcoin increased about $20,000 that also is going to be 5x ROI. So soon, long-term holder metric might spike about 20. Will the history repeat itself and will we see Bitcoin generate 5x again? Well, if Bitcoin could generate 5x from the current price of $59,000, that would put a single Bitcoin at around $300,000 per coin in this bull market. Can this happen? Well, it's hard to say looking forward, but it's definitely possible. Here is another cool chart that represents long-term holders are not selling any of their Bitcoin. The pink line represents the total supply that was last active in between 6 to 12 months. 
and the green line represents the Bitcoin supply last active 3 years ago. I am definitely in that line. I actually never ever sold a single of my BTC for US dollar, and I am not planning to do so. As we can see that the line of short term Bitcoin holders is going down, which means they are selling some of the BTC at second profit of the table. However, the long term 3 plus years Bitcoin holders doing the totally opposite. In fact, since 2020, long term Bitcoin holders increased their positions almost by 10%. My advice would be, do what long term holders do and become one yourself. Do not try to jump in and out of the market because of some good or bad news. Remember, all this news that you see online is just noise, and you are being a victim of the mainstream media. Now, let's take a look at this new video from Michael Saylor where he explains why he dismisses all other digital assets, then he will explain why he believes $100 trillion Bitcoin is just a matter of time. Let's take a look. Okay, so if, take, taking, taking a, I guess, a slightly different direction then. With respect to your so your, your treasury strategy, is it um, is it specifically aligned to Bitcoin investment? Have you have you actually made the decision not to look at other digital assets, not to look at sort of DeFi and other parts of the market? Are you constrained at the moment, either sort of specifically or at at a, at a mandate level to uh, to Bitcoin? Look, B Bitcoin is the crypto asset network. If you're designing a decentralized network to store store value for the next thousand years, that's Bitcoin. The protocol is optimized for digital gold store of value. It's slow. It's secure. It's like a, it's like a impenetrable. It's, it's granite in cyberspace to build a city on. The other cryptos, they're all trying to do different things like DeFi and privacy and provenance and be optimized for, you know, non-fungible tokens and art. And they're all interesting, but I would call them all venture capital investment. They're all ventures. They're adventures. They're a lot more risky, a lot more complicated. If you're if you have a venture fund and you want to invest in crypto ventures, you do that. If you actually have widows and orphans treasury you're a stodgy insurance company and you simply don't want to lose the money. You're not trying to invent something new. You don't want to juggle razor blades. Uh, what you want is just to have a million dollars and put it on the network and not have everybody take it and not lose it. And so no bells and whistles. So Bitcoin is a treasury reserve network. Everything else is, is pursuing a different total addressable market. By the yeah. way, in my opinion, the addressable market for a treasury reserve asset is a hundred trillion. The total addressable market for everything else is like, I mean, a trillion is a lot of money, right? A billion is a lot of money. A trillion, there's only five companies that are a trillion in market cap. So I, I don't really think you need to look that far to find no. the, high, the high opportunity dominant network. I want something a hundred times bigger than the next best thing that's, that's fit for purpose. Okay, okay. Do digital currencies such as the ones that Scandinavia, parts of the EU and uh, and China considering, does that impact or does this have any kind of uh, impact on Bitcoin and other cryptos? No, once you understand that, that Bitcoin is an asset and that, and that dollars and euros are a currency, what you see is that digital currencies compete with other currencies. So the digital currency is more threatening to MasterCard and Visa and currency networks and payment networks. And the digital yuan is, is threatening to the yen and to the dollar and the euro. And they're going to work it out there. The, the, the digital asset, Bitcoin, is threatening most of all right now to gold and then to other treasury assets or stores of value. People, I did a survey on Twitter and I asked and I got 60,000 responses. I said, where did you get the capital that you used to allocate to Bitcoin? It was 49% stocks. It was 21% gold. It was 19% property. It was 10% bonds. So money is flowing from those assets into Bitcoin. And I think that'll continue. Uh, Michael, final question here. And this is really about uh, the, the many in the audience, uh, which are where you were this time last year. There's some which are perhaps even beyond where you are right now in terms of their belief in, in cryptos and Bitcoin. What's your message to the people who are 
where you were this time last year and the message being of course what what do, should they do next it, have they missed the boat perhaps okay well so first you haven't missed the boat right people like me i i i bought it at 10,000 i bought it at 57,000 i'm buying it all the, I'll be buying at 100,000, 200,000 because I don't have a better idea. You haven't missed the boat. Um, the number one thing you got to do as an investor, in my opinion, is you have to estimate the rate of monetary inflation each year for the next eight years. And you have to fill in a spreadsheet with your estimate. Is it 15% a year? Is it 20? Is it five? Is it seven? That drives every other decision you make. Once you come up with that, uh, my opinion is 15 to 17% on average, but you have to come up with your own opinion because that's the input that drives all other asset values and drives all portfolio theory. After you've done that, my suggestion is you go to hope.com. That's a website where we posted all sorts of Bitcoin material and there's resources and books and, and articles and videos and study this and, and don't, don't spend money until you understand it. Uh, it takes about 10 hours to really get it. And you'll be an expert in 20 and you could get the basics of it in three or four. But go study it and then decide for yourself what you think after you study it. The information is free. Most people don't do the work. And so if you think if you don't do the work, you dismiss it out of hand because it's a paradigm shift. If you do the work, you'll say this is monetary electricity. And the first time in 5,000 years, the human race figured out how to put encrypted money on a digital network and move it around you know, at the speed of light and store it for 100 years with no power loss. And if you believe that, your decision making will be simple. And if you don't believe that, you should study it enough until you either agree or you disagree. And then your decision will still be simple. Ultimately, Western Europe and the United States is where the 80% of the money is or 90% of the money. And between that and moving through major finance centers, et cetera, Singapore and the like, I think you're going to see that the monetary energy from those is more than enough to drive it through the market cap of gold, which would make it 10 X bigger. And it, it should go to between 10 trillion and a hundred trillion. And at that point, who knows what happens? I can't be sure. Michael, Michael, Everybody needs I, that I, I, much. We've only got two or three minutes left, so just very, very briefly, uh, just answer sure. these questions. You think it's going to hundred? It's going to be a hundred trillion dollar market. I do. I th I think it's a no brainer. It flips gold because that's ten trillion, and it, and so it's one trillion now. So it'll run there pretty fast, and then I think it'll it'll kind of start to grow progressively, not at two hundred percent a year, but a hundred percent, and then fifty percent, and then thirty percent, and then twenty percent. And ultimately, the, the elephant in the room here is there's $100 trillion of treasury assets that are like negative yielding debt or low yielding debt. It all That $100 trillion of assets and indexes, that all has a negative real yield. And so it doesn't work for insurance companies uh, and for long-term investors and for corporations. They're going to need to find something that, that's got long duration with a positive yield in every monetary environment. And Bitcoin is the perfect engineered treasury asset. If you were if you were coming out of central casting saying, design me an asset that an insurance company can hold to fund insurance policies for 30 years. Or design me an asset for Apple computer to hold instead of cash. I mean, Bitcoin is the ideal asset and there's nothing else that's close. Michael Saylor believes that Bitcoin will flip gold quickly then it will stop growing in 2% annual compound rate. Instead, over time, volatility will decline and it will grow only at 100%, then 50%, then 30% per year. I do think as Bitcoin becomes more and more mature, volatility will eventually decline. Let me know what do you guys think. Will we see $100 trillion Bitcoin? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.